Hello everyone. During my reaction to the end cinematic of the 10.2 raid, I tried to come up with a reason for their empowerment through the tree, with potential story plots that could play out going forwards. In essence, my idea was that their empowerment would shift the power dynamic between Keeper Tier and the Aspects, giving Alex Raza the opportunity to make the choice which she was unable to make during the War of the Skillborn. She would now have the opportunity to confront Keeper Tier with Viranov at her side and challenge his orders of enforcing order upon their unborn children, basically deal with the origin of the conflict between primal dragons and the Ordered Ones, deal with the whole story of Dragonflight and give a reason to their empowerment through Azrov. But as I said during that video, and who knows, maybe my interpretation is entirely wrong. And unfortunately, I was. We'll talk about the entire questline today, but in short, none of it plays out as Keeper Tier returns. Viranov isn't even present. Calicos and Marifra also have better things to do than to see Tier come back. There's no mention of the origin point of the War of the Skillborn or the forced infusion of the Dragon X, that power dynamic of the Queen of the Dragons versus Keeper Tier. They just call him friends over and over again and treat it like it's an amazing thing to have to keep her back. And honestly, on that part, they're not wrong. His return and the aspects of the empowerment. It gives me the impression that this wasn't the way that Dragonflight was planned out. And for some reason, we did get this end result. But that's pure guesswork. I would love to see inside the kitchen, like see how to come up with a storyline and then how the game is produced and, and what like problems come along the way and how you end up at the end product. It would be really interested to see the inner workings. But we can only guess, right? We can only see it the story. We can only look at what we got. And time is going to tell, I suppose. Right then, let's actually talk about the return of Tyr and this questline. This all started with the pre-patch of Dragonflight, in which we needed to go into the revamped Ulderman dungeon and get a disc which contained the memories of Tyr. This was needed because in order to stop Razagev from freeing the other incarnates, the aspect powers had to be restored. Our mission failed, unfortunately, as the discs were thrown into the time waves by the infinite Dragonflight. A problem we will have to solve later. After earning renown, we were asked to come witness a gift of Tyr, a dragon skill forged of the purest silver, which they had kept in the vault of Hell Dragon during their absence. But weirdly enough, it now pulses with potent magic, perhaps due to the return to the Dragon Isles. It recognizes Alex Ross's voice, figures out that Keeper Tyr is no longer here and activates this silver protocol. A great time of need is at hand, and surely Keeper Tyr must return. We must gather the materials required to rebuild his body but it still left him as an empty husk. Those memories on the disc were needed, so Nosdormu would have to face his greatest fear, the darkness of the infinite Dragonflight. In the meantime, we meet up with Trovart of the Tears Guards, which you might remember from the Legion artifact questlines. They're an order dedicated to Tear and his tomb in Tyr's fall, but the years have not been kind, and Trovart at that time was the last one left standing. We go in and collect more memories of Tear, seeing his final moment on Azeroth fighting against the darkness. Koranos then decides to keep some of the information we learned to himself, to keep the part about the Void calling out Alexstrasza that she was going to betray Tyr to himself. Now that doesn't mean big revelations haven't happened. Alexstrasza revealed that she knew about the order being imposed upon their children. Whelplings transformed without a choice, and she went along with it. No wonder the war to Skillborn played out. With Trevard at our sides, we helped reinvigorate the nearly extinct Tears Guard and scour the timeways in search of the disc. The dark future of the infant Dragonflight has been conquered, and some are now even on our side. Together, we figured out where the discs ended up in the hands of Queen Alessand in the Nighthold. The portal to the Nighthold is ready. I have tried to place you out of immediate danger. Be careful. This is not our timeline, but with the knowledge Elisande could potentially gain from the disc, she could be a threat to us all. All right, everyone. This is it. Our most important mission. We are going to the Nighthold, and we're going to get back that disc. Charge! Last one is a soggy troll! Better a soggy troll than an ogre-faced man! Can you two please take this seriously for once? Light guide us. Fort here. We're entering the Nighthold of a different timeline. And the way that they've explained alternate realities and alternate timelines at this point in time is that they're basically like waves in the ocean. They rise and when left alone, they disappear again. Only when they're actively messed around with do alternate realities remain. 
in essence, it comes down to alternate realities stick around and they play a part if and when Blizzard decides that they're gonna play a part. Alternate Draenor from Warlords of Draenor stuck around. We've seen alternate realities invade our timeline during Dragonflight. We've gone into a full-blown Murloc universe. It exists if they want it to exist. And in this case, we're not exactly sure when we are on the timeline, but it's safe to assume that we're in the Nighthold, in Suramar, during the time that the bubble is around the city, so they're locked away from the rest of the world as they've already evolved from the Night Elves into the Nightborn. On the ground, we find research notes of Elydris detailing what they've been doing with the disc after it was found in the canals. It took them 29 days until Runas worked up some spell that worked on the device. This here is Runas the Bright, what our Runas the Shamed was before the whole disconnected from the Nightwell and turning into a Withered as we had him back in Legion. If you don't know what we're talking about, go check out Runas' questlines, one of the more beautiful and sad moments in the game. Elisand is able to get better results working her magics on the disc, figuring out that it belonged to Titan Keeper Tyr. On day 52, they've learned that their knowledge of the world pales before the brilliance of the titans. They see order in many patterns we had assumed were purely chaotic. It is impossible to predict how our continued study could impact the Shell Dorai. What comes next had a few people confused, so I think it's smart to talk about Elisand's story. Want to point out again that this is an alternate timeline, so this is not our Elisand, and it takes place in the past, as Runas is still around. But we're going to assume that time has gone the same here as it has done for us, as Elisand still makes the decision to bubble their city. This decision was made around the time of the War of the Ancients, the big old war against the Burning Legion. It kept them safe, but it also locked them away from the rest of the world. Centuries without moon or sunlight. To survive, they turned to their Nightwell, a font of great power which was made with the eye of Amanfu within the city's heart. Slowly, it changed them into the Nightborn and made them severely addicted to their founder power. Then, many years into the future, with the expansion Legion, the Burning Legion showed up again and Gul'dan told them, either you bring down this shield and you let us in, or the Legion is going to destroy your shield, you and your people, take the city and do whatever we want anyways. So Elisand used her powers, she used the Nightwell, the Eye of Amanful, to scour the timeways, and she saw no other option, no alternative than to side with the Burning Legion. Not because she wanted to, not because she was a willing ally to the destruction of Azeroth, but because she saw no other way. You can speculate on those implications, and in turn, some amongst the Nightborn led a rebellion. The story played out, and we proved her wrong. We defied whatever she saw in the timeways, or perhaps we played right into her hands. But here and now, we have an Elisand who never had Gul'dan knock on the door quite yet. Now we have an Elisand before that choice, getting her hands on Tyr's memories, and fighting someone with powers over time is rather difficult, as they can just rewind the clock. Going in with Hotwind and Taltis attacking first to create a distraction doesn't change much either, and her work to understand this disc is crucial for her people. Next, we try Nolaki drawing in her focus, attacking her from all sides with then Valunai and ourselves striking her from behind to deal the final blow, but Valunai has a different idea. Valunai, what are you doing? Elisand, please. We need that disc to restore the memories of our friend, Keeper Tear. His mind holds many secrets that could aid my cause. I know you want what's best for your people. But the world needs Tyr's compassion and valor once again. So be it. I have gleaned the knowledge I need to depart this time way and keep Suramar safe. The disc is yours. You let Elisan go? I believe that is what Tyr would have done. You did the right thing, Valonai. She wanted to help her people. We were the ones attacking her. You have all done well. We have accomplished our mission. Now, we will forge the future of the Tyr's Guard. Let's return with the Disc Champion. I believe Tyr has waited long enough. True to her nature, Elisand does whatever she has to for the security and safety of her people. She used the disc for the betterment of her people, but she's also able to listen to pleas and hands it over now that she's learned how to depart this timeway and keep Sudamar safe. 
anyone's guess what that might mean for the future. But I imagine this alternate Alessand has found some way to keep this alternate reality intact and off the path of ending up in the hands of the Legion, as we saw it happen in our timeline. I'm honestly really excited and curious to see what this alternate Azeroth would look like. Back during Wars of the Denor, we already wondered what an Azeroth would look like without an Orcish Horde invasion. Now we get the possibility of an Azeroth in which Alessand has the power over the timeways, some knowledge of the Titans. That part I'm quite interested in. But they do need to do something with the story of Nosdormu and the Bronze Dragonflight. We've, we've gone from guarding the purity of the timeways or everything would collapse to, oh yeah, you could just leave the timeline now and nobody cares. It's not that they can't build a story around it. It's just they're going to have to fix it a bit. The one path must be preserved. Did it work? Is he... Alex Traza. Was dawn. Welcome back, old friend. How long have I slumbered? Too long, dear. Much too long. You have not changed, Alexstrasza. Who are you, Nosdormu? But what of the other aspects? Time has not been kind to all of us. But new aspects have risen to take their place. Then, you have suffered in my absence. Is that why you have reforged me? At first, yes. But you join us now in a time of peace and friendship. If it were not for our new ally, Captain Trevard, and the Tears Guard, we may have lost you forever. I, we, the Tears Guard, have followed your example for centuries. We would be honored if you would stay and speak to us at our headquarters. Come, Tear. There is so much we all have to tell you. Caligos, Marifra, and Veronov. They were busy elsewhere, I guess. Caligos maybe on a date with Jaina. Marifra dealing with the New World Tree, and Veronov hanging out with the Welplings, perhaps. Can you imagine, though, Veronov's reaction to having Keeper Tear back, knowing what he did, how he's at the core of the War of the Skillborn? I genuinely wonder why they keep calling him friends and they haven't dealt with those events. Now, for Travart, this is quite the day. Tear and the Tears Guard live again. From seeing Tyr depicted in the Strathholm Cathedral, to now seeing him here walking and talking, those depictions, they pale in comparison. There's so much good that they can do now, and we can ask the Keeper some questions. I saw your battle against Zakush. Do you think we're finally free of the Black Empire? I believe my victory was decisive, but the Black Empire and its forces are insidious. I'm sure there will be more battles to wage ahead. The Tyr's Guard and I will be ready to confront their forces, wherever they may reappear. What can you tell me about the Titans? The Titans are beings of unfathomable wisdom. They empowered we Keepers to fight chaos. As a result, they are responsible for much of the good that exists. But even as a Keeper, I was not privy to their end goal, nor can I yet fathom it. I serve them always, but I fear I cannot tell you much more than you already know. Can you tell me about other ancient battles you fought? I have fought in many great battles. I fought with my brethren against the Black Empire that once ruled Azeroth. I fought the Elemental Lord Ragnaros with Prime Designate Odin. With the help of intelligent proto-dragons, I fought Gelagrons, which is when I lost my hands. My final war was against Keeper Loken and his forces when he betrayed us. The end of that battle, you know. I have been in many battles as an instrument of war. Let us speak of lighter things. Indeed, let's check on Tyr as he gazes upon our brand new world tree. The world I have returned to bears little resemblance to the one I left, Koronos. Empires have risen and fallen. The old gods are no more. The Dragon Isles have slumbered and awakened. Old friends have died, some of them ignobly, and the ones who remain 
do not seem to have need of me. Even the Aspects regained their powers without my aid, or the Titan's intervention. Our circumstances are similar, Keeper Tear. We were made to serve. I too have fulfilled my purpose, but this new world is vast and wondrous. Perhaps it will be enough for us to just observe and help safeguard it. Hmm. I have much to ponder. And that's the story of how Keeper Tear returned to the world of Azeroth. Times have changed and he has much to learn with little time to do it. As the war within and the story beyond looms on the horizon, there will be a story for another day though. So for now, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. And until next time, see ya!